Hello, hello, hello to all my uniques. This is your favorite girl, Akudo. Welcome to your unique wisdom. For this week, we are going to talk about marriage. How to build a successful marriage. How to make sure that your marriage doesn't end up in divorce. Like I told you guys, I found this great apostle, Apostle Joshua Salman. I love the way he preaches and I'm going to be bringing knowledge to you guys. To all my returning subscribers, hello, welcome back. For those of you that are not still part of my family, I'm still waiting for you guys. Come on, you see the red button? Click on that button. Wait for the notification bell. Click on that one too so that you can come join more family, the unique family. All right, now let's jump right into the video. From Atlanta, from Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia. Beautiful. beautiful, wonderfully, wonderfully made, by made by God. Welcome to the big show. He said a lot about marriage, how important marriage is, what you need to look for in marriage, how to let each other be who they are. He talked about do not change anybody's personality. You cannot change your spouse's personality. There's a difference between personality and a mindset. The apostle explained it in this video you're about to watch. You can change somebody's mindset, the way they think, the way they see things, but you cannot change people's personality. So don't go marry that brother or that sister and think, oh, once I bring her in, I'm going to change her personality. All of that it ain't happening you are not going to change nobody's personality. I'm not going to give you guys the whole juicy details. Now, jump right into the video so you can hear for yourself. Remember to grab a paper, to grab a pen, because you're going to write down so many things. I'll see you on the other side. Here. Your intention, your motive for wanting a wife, your motive for wanting a husband, your motive for wanting a job, your motive for wanting certain levels of influence, if not defined, can end you and the other parties involved in utter frustration. I've said it that motives determine levels of commitment. The clearer and more sincere and more long term the motive, the greater and the deeper the commitment. There are things in my life that I don't have a long-term affiliation to because I don't intend to stay long around them. It shows in my commitment. There are things that are a matter of life and death for me. It shows in my commitment. Many relationships, sadly especially love relationships and even marriages, are built on wrong motives. And this is the foundation for frustration. There are many kinds of reasons why people relate, especially in, in the area of love, marriage, and the rest. I think for me, one of, the, one of the, the most dangerous and destructive motives for love is pressure. Pressure. The pressure to exit singleness has made people to make very fatal marital mistakes. The pressure to manage loneliness have made people to get into relationships without thinking of the implications. Pressure. There are people who have gotten into all kinds of things, from businesses to individuals to groups to clubs to associations, even to churches, as a result of pressure. I've seen people who come to a to Koinonia like this and see how wonderful the worship team, um, you know, how they are and the wonderful things they are doing and out of pressure, not out of revelation. I want to be part of this. They are carried away by the flamboyancy and forget that for every performance here, there is time for rehearsals. And it can be very discomforting, though rewarding. Pressure. 
especially for our dear sisters. I love you with all my heart. But the truth is that many of our sisters need help. The pressure to exit singleness, sometimes caused by parents, sometimes caused by movies, sometimes caused by an awareness of the passage of age and time. Now, they are sincere, don't get me wrong, but it's still pressure. Are we together? The pressure to exit singleness can be a wrong motive. The pressure to make money fast can be a wrong motive. And will not allow you to patiently build systems that last. Pressure. Wrong motives. Pressure to exit singleness. People get into relationships as a way of managing emotional imbalances. Whether a gentleman or a lady, they just feel I'm lonely and I don't like the loneliness. And all of a sudden, you now bring a lady into your life or bring a gentleman or bring personalities into your life who begin to pay the price for loneliness that the Holy Spirit and the revelation of Scripture is what should bring. Are we together now? It's amazing how people transfer their emotional excesses to partners. This happens in marriage. This happens in relationships. There's not aggression. They transfer responsibilities that they should have for their lives. They hate themselves. They feel bad about themselves. And there's nobody to blame because they're the only ones there. Then they now bring a woman into their life. And use the template of their negative outlook on yourself, on the dear lady. So the guy tells the lady, look, why are you not talking to me? He says, please, I'm not in the mood. A wise man should understand that this is how ladies act. She's probably offended with something and needs him to gently just probe through. And then the guy just turns and slaps her. That slap would have happened still. He's, he has been angry with himself. It's just that there was no scapegoat to vent it. Unfortunately, the scapegoat now happens to be whether a lady is going out with or a wife. And then he acts out on her. And uses an obvious reason. She shouted at me. Then you use a hammer to kill a fly because she shouted. So you see that the, the real thing is not about the shout. It's about a negative outlook. Is that true? A sister can make a statement like, May God prosper us all. So you are trying to say, I'm not rich, Abby. I've been watching you. No. It's an outlook. It's a disposition you have sustained for a long time. And just because it's amazing, it is wrong to transfer your imbalances to another person. Managers do it to their staff. Is that true? Pastors do it to members. And there is always a supposed legitimate ground you can use. That's why you must be God-fearing. It is the fear of the Lord that will judge you. You will go back and say, Kai, but truly, truly, mm -mm, this one, I'm at fault. Our chains breaking tonight. May they so break in Jesus' name. Love is not supposed to be or marriage or relationships. It's not a way of transferring an assignment that the world should do to a partner to yoke that person with pain. No. Number three, wrong motives for relationships and marriage. We're still on motives. The perception that financial advantages will be derived from that relationship or that marriage. Now, financial advantages should be part of the advantages derived, but not the basis. You don't come to somebody's house just to eat, but at least a good family should offer you something, if not anything, water. It's amazing, and let me say this, I know we are humans, please don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm very sympathetic to people's situations. There are families who, because of the reality of their financial predicaments, doesn't matter what factors cost it. The truth is that on the strength of certain levels of financial predicament, the personalities involved, and that includes both ladies and guys, mostly ladies, but includes gentlemen too, can be pushed 
Is that true? Into relationships and even marriages that should not be in hope that by being connected to that individual, you can derive financial advantages as the ultimate basis. It's a terrible thing. If my basis of relating with um, come David Dam, if I'm relating with David Dam because I know that he has some money, and I'm hoping that instead of begging all the time, why don't I just become his wife? Are we together now? It's a terrible thing. And sometimes, let's be very sincere, our parents can push us. Even for men, they now come and ask the man, you are working. Is the woman working? He said, no, she loves God. She said, no way. So that my own share, she will now come in and block my own share. It's selfish. It's selfish. Listen, let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. I say this from my heart. Parents are not supposed to wait for children to bless them. It's an anomaly. And if it does happen, if it does, children are mandated to honor their parents. Are we together now? It's a scriptural obligation. But no parent should sit down waiting for their children to succeed. They sow their children in school like an investment. They sow their children in relationships like an investment. In hope that their graduation will, or they are getting into whatever relationship, will now bring back financial rewards. It's selfish. It is not godly. Now, it is largely a product of pressure. But let truth be truth, brothers and sisters. It is selfish. There are many homes today that would have been in peace. If selfishness of this sort was avoided. So there are men who are going around looking for ladies who are working, working class ladies earning 250,000 who maybe age is not on their side and they are willing to volunteer themselves to exit the ladies out of singleness provided she will pay the rent, provided she will do all. And so his own contribution is to make her a missus. It's selfish. There will be trouble in that relationship. Is God blessing us? Financial reward is a wrong basis for marriage. It's a wrong basis for latching on to people. Now, don't get me wrong. I've taught you on favor. Favor is relational, but it must not be the basis. I have enjoyed favor, knowing people. I have been blessed extensively, but it cannot be the basis. Many of you are very sad hearing what you are hearing. Because for some of you, this has been the pivot. It's, it's, a, it's a pillar of your love and marital philosophy. It must crumble. Because God is rebuilding something that will last. If you are with me, say Amen. amen. Wrong motives. Don't be under pressure. You say, it is true, age is not on your side. But just running into marriage or run, whoever comes, it doesn't matter. Once let, let the guy just say I'm a Christian. No. It is selfish because children are going to come from that union. Don't forget. If it's a business relationship, you can quit any day. But marriage, no, pay attention. Let me talk to every gentleman here. Remember that children will come from the product of your relationship. You must not be so self-centered. That you ignore certain things because of what you are looking for. No. You must be very sympathetic. There are all kinds of children moving around with all versions of irresponsibility communicated. And it was a derivative of selfishness. Most of us have been uncomfortable with our loved ones. We have frowned and complained very vocally about the things they have done. God is now giving us a chance to correct it. Otherwise, we are going to do the same thing. Hallelujah. Relationship must be based on sincerity. Sincerity. Not some self-centered thing. This is the reason why... Let me tell you how to know that a relationship is self-centered. The ease with which the individuals live. Whether it's a love relationship, whether it is a business relationship... If I can let go a business partner I've known for two years easily, it's a sign that there was no genuine commitment. Are we together? I'm not an advocate of divorce. 
But you see, sometimes as a man of God, part of your responsibility will have to be to manage individuals on this wise. And I have seen the pain in couples when they are about parting. Sometimes they have to do because the law has come into it and you have to respect the law, the constitution of your territory. But you see them live in tears. You just know that the differences were truly irreconcilable. But still there was that pain. But the relationships we have these days, it enters with speed and leaves with speed. The guy just tells the lady, I lost the contract. She said, eh, eh, which of them now? Said the big one. No? And then the lady, she doesn't leave at once. She begins to angry. Call, I'm busy, sorry, I'm this. Or the gentleman now comes and then the lady says, well, there's something I want to tell you. I'm so sorry, but I just want you to know that we have an idol in our family. My, my grandfather was actually a priest. And there's a covenant that any man that comes around me, something happens. The brother said, you mean it? He said, no problem. Abba, is it not koinonia? And never pick the call again. You see that? Now, but the day he was talking to his friends about the lady, he said, I love this. He said, are you sure? He said, I do. But now because you are aware of something that, and it's not like you are the one who will fight the warfare, just to stand by while the fight is going on, yet you cannot do it. And you want to spend your life, as you say, with the lady. No, sir. Let's grow up. Some of these things we are doing is a lot of childishness. This thing is serious business. Hmm. Is God helping us? Say in the name of Jesus. I redefine my motive for wanting friends, for marriage, and for the pursuit of God. There are many Christians who seek God for cars and houses. You see, the truth is that when you seek somebody for an ulterior motive, the day you get it, your goal has been achieved. There is no impetus. If I need children desperately and you find out that the system of getting children is a woman, how many do you want for the day she gives birth to the fourth child? You will subconsciously find out that she's a goal achieved. That's the reason why you see many supposed romantic relationships end up in ashes after certain things have happened. Because the object of it was not genuine love. It was in pursuit of certain things. So the guy wants to exit singleness and he brings the lady. The day he gets married, he's shocked that one week later, he's admiring his single days. Why? Because the goal has been achieved. Mama has been disturbing me. Mary, oh yeah, Mama have married. That's it. And the wife says, oh, what do we do with ourselves now? We're married. Oh, well, I go and ask my mother that first us to marry. <laughs> Motives. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents. So I come to God with fasting and prayer. Lord, I want to know you. I want your presence. And the word of God moves past my words and my singing and enters my heart and sees in that heart that, Lord, I've, I've been despised. They've been looking at me as if I would not become anything. So, Lord, anoint me. And God says, you failed the test. Uh -uh. This is not the key to the anointing. But you may be singing and the word of God comes to your heart and discerns that, Lord, I seek to see your kingdom come. I seek to see life change. The word returns back to God with a report, genuine, and the anointing comes upon your life in dimensions and proportions you didn't even pray for. This is the mystery behind receiving sometimes more than what you prayed for. Your motive was also praying. While you were praying, your motive was praying. God, give me money. And then your motive was saying, God, use me to prove to people. And God says, no, I'm hearing two of them. Your motive is canceling your prayer. God, bless me. Lord, I look at lives and I see an opportunity to represent Christ to them. Your motive has a voice and heaven can hear it. You have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. That's my testimony. Lord, you have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. 
Sing it one more time. Lord, you have captured my heart because you, my heart with your love. Here's the part I love. Hey, hey, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. That's the name that is worth my adoration. If all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Listen, please sit down. Look at me, everybody. It is time for everyone in a relationship or married or ready for a relationship to be sincere with yourself tonight and probe your motive. Apostle, our family have suffered and they drove me. They said, I'm, I'm of a marriageable age. They said, I should go and bring a man that will help us. Your motive is sincere and I give you the credit for being sincere, but it is wrong. It is wrong. That's why God will bring a brother that will be a millionaire in five years. But because your motive is to get the future now, you will turn away your blessing and look for something else. And five years later, you will say, I had a chance. I had a chance to build with this brother. But because my motive was hidden about now, today. How many people had the privilege to build great ministries with people? They didn't have their motives were wrong. And today they look at men of God on TV. I used to know this man on campus. I used to, what did you do about it? You did not see, you didn't discern greatness. So you were looking for tomorrow today. Now that rejected stone has become such a cornerstone that you will have to join the queue today and watch in admiration. Be careful when you despise people. This is just by the way, but be careful. Brothers and sisters, do not despise anybody who is working with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a track record of producing signs and wonders. He said there is this treasure. Look at people like us. Look what he's done with our lives. Don't you ever look at somebody today just because he's wearing a torn shoe. I'm not saying it just for relationship. There are many of us, we have a mindset of disdain. Not relationship. Once you only honor people who seem to have a persona. When you see their car and you see finance, they are worthy of your respect. Be careful. Because that rejected stone, that rejected stone, brothers and sisters, when you see the Son of Man in power and glory, now the brother is fasting, the brother is praying. The truth is that even if you visit him, it's an embarrassing truth, but he cannot afford Gary. And he has been sincere to tell you, I'm not a thief. God is helping me. Relationship is a risk. Whoever can take that risk deserves to sit on the throne. Don't you ever admire my throne when you did not appreciate Adulam. There is a relationship between Adulam and the throne. Is God speaking to us? Mm. If you were not there during my pain, don't expect to be invited. That's why I love people and I honor them. I see young pastors, most of them, thrown away by supposed fathers, thrown away by people. And some of them come and say, man of God, my life is scattered, but I love the Lord. I was wrongly mentored. And so my, my, my life, and I tell them, don't worry, you can start again. Because you can throw the pen and say, carry, I'm not ready for headache. Do you know in this our world, we love results, but we hate laboring to make the result happen. When you see a young man and a young woman, fire brand, you just incorporate sonship. It's funny what we do. Come, darling. This is my daughter. Come, David. This is my son. What investment did you make in them? They came to your office five years ago. You threw them away. Now you heard that this guy is a voice all around. You heard that this lady has a dangerous prophetic grace. And you just incorporate people. No. No, sir. You have no, you are not a stakeholder over any life you did not believe in. Are we together? I knew you yesterday. That's nonsense. Did you believe? 
When I said God was going to help us, did you believe? When I said I had the call of God upon my life with a torn trouser, sister, did you believe in him? When the gentleman was fighting an incurable disease that you were aware of and you ran away, did you believe? Our world is full of regrets because people lack discernment. You would have looked at Saul and called him a failure until you find out who was writing the epistles all around. You would have looked at Moses and called him a stammerer. You would have looked at Peter and called him very emotionally boisterous. Be careful when you conclude on men. Everybody is a project under construction. Let God finish. Help those outside. Everybody is a project under construction. Make him a 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 Babu Babu Wani Kamar Listen, let me just add something quickly. Be careful when you talk about people, especially aspects of their lives that are not favorable. Brothers and sisters, Jesus had resurrected, they were still talking about his death. There are people you may see today, yes, the guy was a smoker when you knew him. You've not known him for five years. And this brother has received, do you know, I used to have a classmate years ago. That guy, I got to hear that he got into all kinds of funny things. His father was a pastor. And this brother got into, I mean, this, just all this smoking, these funny things. I wondered where he got that thing from. You looked at this guy, his eyes were dark. His mouth, you know, cracked all, scattered life. As if he never went to school. I remember one day seeing the guy and he said he wanted to learn guitar. He was crying. I told him, I said, my friend, the truth is that you're messing up your life, but God can give you a chance. And he said, everybody has turned him down. I said, don't worry. Do you know, four years ago, I found out he was a pastor in Salem Chapel. Yes. Yes. Fiery pastor. Ah! When he called me, I said, ah! He was, I said, you mean it? Salem Chapel. Archbishop Sam Amaga. Salem Chapel. You've become a man of God now. He said, yes. I was talking and then we were discussing. I was so happy. I mean, two minutes went to five minutes and he blasted in tongues. I said, this guy is filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, this is, this is not tongues that started today. No, there is tongues. This thing has graduation. It has levels. Ah! His brother was, was rattling this thing and I just looked at him. I said, that's right. Brothers and sisters, imagine the person who advised that nobody should help him. That person will bury his head in shame forever. Most of our parents are old. There is no helper because they advise people not to help their helpers. They said this boy will be useless forever. This lady is a prostitute forever. While they were talking, the hand of God was following that prophetess. While that was happening, you are living your life anyhow. See, do you know something about the call of God? The call of God is dangerous. It will haunt you until it finds you. You do what you are doing. The call will remain. I tell you this. Yes. So, you will see somebody in a beer parlor now. That's a geo. I tell you. It takes discernment. Just, I'm not endorsing all these things. But while you are concluding, that geo, that 30 churches you are seeing, and the person... The day God is ready to stamp his feet. You are on your way going from home. As drunk as you are. Fire falls from heaven. God will put a burden in the heart of one old intercessor woman. Who will pray for two years. Not knowing the name of the person she's praying for. That's you there. Prophecy is haunting you. The first dream is as you take from stupor. You see a crusade. You get up and say, no, me. Me that I contributed in scattering the chairs of one crusade. God says, keep watching. Let me tell you, one of the signs of what the Spirit of God is doing in this season is bringing people who are this rejected stone. 
you see. They are rising from families. I'm saying this prophetically. There are people they've concluded about you. They've concluded everything about you. But God, God, out of the ashes, am I dying today? I see the breaking of a brand new day. In which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day. Your family may not look like anything. But out of the ashes of that dying today. I see the breaking of a brand new day. In which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of the brand new day. Listen, sister, if you don't like the brother, just go. Don't tear him down. Just go. Brother, if you don't like the sister, just go. Don't tear them down. Because God is in the business of turning people's lives around. You will see a brother that graduated 10 years, moving like a fugitive in one week. Three jobs just come. Have you not seen how history has changed people's lives? We must repent from concluding on people. Not when they are. That's why, you see, let me tell you something. This is how I am. One hand is the hand of iron. Another hand is the hand of love. This is true fatherhood. When you are teaching, you teach preventive. You challenge people. But the other hand must be there. Are you listening to me? When you see me stand on stage and I'm preaching, you see the fire and fiery because I'm trying to create a platform for people to walk right. But then there is another hand, brothers and sisters. If all your hands are iron, you will not be a good preacher. On one hand, you must challenge people. But on another hand, you must be ready to wipe the tears of people. One of my prayers as a person is to remain a shoulder that any and all kinds of people can come. Whether you are a drunkard, people can criticize. That's why you never come and find anybody saying something here and say, this lady, we know her. So what? What is your business? It is the house of God, not your house. Leave them. Oh, the brother comes today. Just leave him. Focus on what God is doing. One day. Just like someone, you see God touching people here. You don't know how long God has been following them. If God has not given up on people, don't, be, don't give up on people. Let me tell you, society is full of people with all kinds of pain. Don't come and add to it. You see people laugh in church? Forget all that laughter. There are people, some entered prostitution because of pain and frustration. Others entered it because of the frustration of their fathers. Some ladies are pursuing men for money, not because they are bad. It's the pressure of the pain. So you teach on one side, but with another hand you are there to show love. Is God teaching us something? You have to learn. Some of us are pastors. We are very quick to conclude on people. We are very quick to turn and say, that lady, this brother, let me tell you, you know it. Ask the workers. There is nobody, nobody. There are people who have gotten pregnant in this ministry out of wedlock. I stood by them. Suspect me is your cup of tea. I love God and I love them too much to allow your legalism. Stop it. We don't stand close to our wounded people in the body of Christ. We are the first to point to them. We are the first to say this guy will never rise. We are the first to say this pastor came down. We are the first to say this, this brother cannot. Keep quiet. If the God in heaven says there is hope for a tree, then you better support him and say there is hope for a tree. I'm speaking to certain people here. There are some ladies who believe they will never get married. You ask them why they say, Apostle, if you know what I've done with my life, I bring you a word of hope. This God you see is a mighty God. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are You're amazing. so amazing. You are amazing. Oh, oh, oh. God is ministering.
ministering to people. Motives. Number two, let me hurry up. Roles. There must be clarity of roles. Clarity of roles. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. A man has a role in a relationship. A man has a role in marriage. There is a divine order. A woman has a role. He said, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Whoever that man is, whether he's a pastor, whether he's an apostle, whether he's a prophet, whether he's a business CEO, there are roles. Most challenges in relationships, most challenges in marriage, is because of one or the other party. When they refuse to perform the due diligence of their roles. I was counseling a pastor this morning before I came into Zaria. And we got into a very serious discussion. And he shared with me a few things that I felt were not supposed to be as far as his family was concerned. And he seemed to justify it with a lot of spirituality. He hoped I would be impressed. At the end of it, I told him, carry a paper, carry Bible. I told him, I said, go back to your wife. And apologize to your wife. He said, he has a fasting program. I said, cancel it. Go to your wife. Apologize to your wife. He so strong him. But I said, you honor me. If you take my voice to be the voice of God in your life, your heavens will remain closed. There's no need praying for you. Go back. Swallow your pride. Humble yourself. And say, wife, this is what I have done. I have not played my role well. And I told him the heavens will be open. Listen. I told you in relationships, there is no big manism. You must be willing to be vulnerable. I will hearing what I am saying. Very important. There are husbands who have not played their roles well. There are wives who have not played their roles well. There are pastors and leaders who have not played their roles well. There are those in love relationships who have not played their roles well. There must be a definition. No system works when there is no clarity of roles. Nobody will come and sit down on the keyboard if it's not in the worship team. There are many people who can play keyboard, but there is an assigned role. And even among all those who are playing keyboards, they know those who are on duty. Is that true? There is chaos and disorderliness every time there is vagueness of roles. If the wife has money, she buys food. If the man has money, he buys food. There is no clarity. When I'm not saying there cannot be assistance, but let there be clarity. Who is the authorized personality for performing this? If a man can cook and decides to go to the kitchen, according to that marriage, who is supposed to... That kitchen is whose office? If because of the nature of the job of the people, the man says, no, I love you. So my love constrains me. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The payment of school fees is because the man has lost his job or has not gotten a job. And the woman has an advantage and she says, look, my husband, I will go out of the way to pay the school fees. That is an assistance whose role scripturally, provision is under whose office. Salvation is not under the office of the Holy Spirit. It's under the office of the Christ. There is no other name given to man by which we must be saved. You can't say, Holy Spirit, I believe in you and be born again. He is part of the Godhead, but it is not his office. When you pray, you pray to the Father, Jesus taught us. Answer prayers is in the office of the Father. Even in heaven, there are roles. Are we together now? The 20 and 4 elders have their roles. Gabriel, as an archangel, has a role. He doesn't show up any, every time he's shown up. It was a role. In heaven, where there is no devil. In heaven, there was an exact angel that brought messages. Our lives are disorderly because our businesses, our churches, our ministries, 
Look at this. I, I always give this example. Watch this. If I throw this on the ground by mistake, whose role is it to come and help and pick and give it to me? If there is no, if there is no definition, Sam will try to run and come. Is that true? This lady will try to run and come and there will be chaos. Because all there was no definition of who plays which role. Is that true? There has to be an authorized system. If this mic goes off now, everybody will run to the technical stand if there is no definition of who does what. You see, when there are roles, reconciliation is easy because it's easy to identify who defaulted. But when there are no roles, confusion is a sign that a deceiver is present. Are we together now? You have to understand how these systems work. Thank you guys. Are we together? You must understand. It's very important. You're a businessman. Train your staff. Nobody does just anything. No, sir. The wife cannot be the husband in the house. Doing everything. It doesn't matter whether she has more money than the man. It's not about money. It's a divine order. You don't like what I'm teaching? Please listen and find true freedom. Who is responsible for the disciplining and the correcting of the children? If the man carries a rag and mobs the house and sweeps the house and does everything. If the couples agree that let there be this because of our uniqueness, it is love. But not that people, do you know that most people come into relationships with our ideas? of roles. The lady has her idea of roles based on what you saw with her mother and her father or her elder sister. The man and everybody keeps their own we are talking about expectations shortly and then there is chaos and anarchy. She collects 500,000 as a seed and then the man stops giving her money for four months and she says you are joking. In my world you are supposed to keep giving me money whether I collect one million because you are the man. And the man says, in my world, whoever has money at the moment pays for the bills. Both of them are tongue-talking. They are spirit-filled. But that relationship cannot work. Are we together? There is no definition of roles. No relationship can thrive. No marriage can thrive. Even your work with God, you know the one that is for God. Give to Caesar what belongs. There are some things that are a man's role. Sisters, listen. There is an anointing on everything a man does as prescribed by God. Any man that cannot cater for his family, that means in God's system, he has created a provision that if any man abides by that provision, with time he should sustain the ability to provide for his family. Is that true? There is a role of the woman. I don't want to go into all of the details. I've preached them in other messages. But we have gentlemen who are very irresponsible in many relationships and many families. A man can cross his leg with three or four children. And then they come with the report card. Daddy, uh, next week is school. Is there, am I working? Have you seen me go out to work? Go meet your mother, Jerry. It's shameless. It's supposed to be a taboo. And then he meets the dear woman who covers his shame as proof that she submits to him and pays the school fees. Then the man is happy and goes to sit down with his colleagues playing drafts and sitting in front of shops and all of this. And they discuss themselves. I control my wife. I don't let her do any nonsense. Every money plus I is my own. How about women that can have one million naira and watch their husband struggle 200,000? Say, me, I'm not a fool. I love him, but I'm not that foolish. Let him do it. If I do it, he will get used to it. Wise sayings, counsels of Ahitophel that spread from family to family, from mothers to children, from fathers to all kinds of things. And people destroy homes with all kinds of mindsets. Listen, a believer is not just one who has given his heart to Christ. A believer is one who has submitted to the word of God as final authority. Is God speaking to us? 
I know my role in this ministry. I have a role in Koinonia. The Lord has put me by grace and by privilege to head this ministry. I know my role and I play it well. I can do other things, but I choose to limit myself so that other people can find expression. The heads of department are here. They were constituted. If I trust them, then I step back and let them work. There is a system of supervision. I allow their creativity to find expression so that I can focus in the ministry of the word and prayer. There are many churches that will not grow because the man of God wants to do everything. You don't trust anybody. They finish collecting offering and you just stroll as if you are going to pray. And, and you just stroll in and say, why is that envelope on the ground? Put it back. What is your own job? Stay away. That's how many men are. They give their wives money and follow her to the market. Today I want to see. Okra can be this price. And they watch. And we, we make a fool of ourselves. Understand your role. If the person fails, there is a third party in that relationship. And God is more than just. As carnal as we are, God gives you the anointing and steps back. I can misuse the anointing. He will call me to order, but he can trust me with the anointing. If God can trust me with the anointing, who are you not to trust another person? There must be clarity of roles. Even in a relationship, there must be clarity of roles. Define it. Who does what? You are in a relationship. Come, darling. And the guy doesn't pray. He doesn't care. When it's time to pray, say, please, you will lead us. You know, you are the one who is a woman of God. That's a foolish man. Because according to the principle of priesthood, you can start carnal, but you shouldn't remain like that. You should so contend for growth that you should catch up fast. Also, you know, us, we, are, we don't love God generally. You are the ones who are really into this God thing. Just pray for us. It's a thing a man should be ashamed of. I don't condemn you for being where you are, but you have to sit up. Are we together? The order of priesthood in the home is first man. God watched man fall when he came. He didn't go to Eve. He said, that's not my organogram. Adam, come, 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 come. Adam gave him access to talk to Eve. Then he went to Eve. Even God could not talk to Eve directly. He had to come to Adam. So when Satan starts talking to your wife, in your home, something about your priesthood is missing. Why will a strange woman enter your house and start manipulating your wife? Where did you keep your discernment? Where were the dreams? No prophecy, no dream, no feeling anything. Come on now. Is God speaking to us? There must be clarity of roles in this ministry. I know my role. I can't allow anybody's prayer life, as much as I know, to be greater than my prayer life in this ministry. I'm finished. What else am I doing? It's not just holding the mic. Geo and, and, and all these funny things. It's not just about water and all of this. There is a spiritual... When things go wrong in people's lives in the ministry, ask those who know me. I go back with pain and I say, God, what happened that you didn't show me? I remember one of our heads of department that died, I don't know how many years ago. Ask the protocol. Immediately they told me that thing. When I finished, I went on a retreat immediately. For three days, nobody saw me. I was asking God questions. What happened to my eyes? What happened to my ears? That is a great father. That you enter your home and see your children crying and say, well, in Nigeria, I'm not worried. No, you are an irresponsible man. A good man will stand there in the presence of the children and with tears coming, he will go and lock himself and say, that's it. Which, who in my circle is financially free? I'm going to break my pride and go back. I can't watch this. I, it's amazing how children go to fathers. Daddy, I want school fees. I don't have. What should I do? That's irresponsible. That is sin. It's the same thing like drinking blood. 
and eating flesh because you are destroying someone's destiny. Please don't get married when you are not ready to play your role. Being a man is not about having a masculine figure. It's not six-pack. It's responsibility. Are we together? That's why we finish Koinonia. I stand every Friday for at least five hours. When I stand here around 7, 7.30, I don't leave this place sometimes till 12 or 1 in the night. Responsibility. I return by 4.30 from a trip. I've been away. I've not even eaten anything, truthfully speaking. I'm here standing. By 5.30, we're off again to Lagos. It's responsibility. It's responsibility. I owe a responsibility to teach you the truth under God. You have honored me. It will be wicked. Immediately I arrived, I carried my laptop and my notebook first just to dust on the topic. Abba, provider, protector. Abba, provider. Don't bring any woman into your life that you don't have. It starts from relationship. This irresponsibility has traces. You can see it. As a man, don't keep quiet in a relationship every time there is a cost dimension. Even if you don't provide it, be sympathetic to it. Are we together? You want to pay school fees and your wife pays. Don't say, oh well, thank you. No, my wife, thank you so much. You have helped me do this. I'm proud of you. I truly appreciate Me? Tell my wife this? No way. I won't do anything. Then you continue. How many women leave their roles to house help who win the hearts of their husband and they keep binding and casting because they are out gossiping with people who talking about people. Um, um, what's her name? Please make sure you know my husband doesn't like too much of it. Don't do this. If you are busy, it's justifiable. But most of them is out of laziness. And then the lady is preparing. And the man is watching a virtuous lady. She comes to serve him and the devil starts suggesting saying, what was really your plan for a wife? And at the end of it, when those women come for counseling, they won't tell you the whole story. They will cut the path that makes the man evil. Are we together? You must be willing to play your role. You must be. I can't come to a house and see children running up and down, mucus on their nose, their clothes with oil, and the wife is just crossing her legs. No, ma, you are failing in your role. Just because the man helped to dress the children is not his role. The design of a woman is a reflection of her role. Visitors cannot come and sit down and then the wife is just sitting and then the man goes to the fridge. He's trying to quickly prepare something. And then we say, find my husband, that's how he is. No, that's not how he is. That's how you made him. God made him to occupy a position of honor. Is God speaking to us? Yes. I must pray for you. It's a responsibility. I must attend to you as much as possible. It's a responsibility. I must sow into your life. Not waiting for you to carry money and come and give me. No, sir. Brother, is that what you are doing in your relationship? Is that what you are doing in your marriage? Sister, is that what you are doing? Let's correct these things tonight. If you are not yet in a relationship, thank God. If you are not yet married, thank God. Because now you are learning. You are learning. How many women are carrying the book? You see a child sick. Children sick, three children sick, and you see the woman holding a hot air umbrella in the afternoon, backing one and holding two with the umbrella, just singing praise and worship and going, and then the husband is somewhere. And you will find that man in a pepper soup joint somewhere. You see that? Or donating money to one man of God. It doesn't matter even if it's me, it's a sin. You take care of your family first. Don't carry any money and come and give any man of God and leave your family dying. God does not act like that. Are we together? And you are wondering, where is this woman's husband? 
child is coughing, the other one is purging, the baby is crying, you see her tapping, the baby standing in the hot sun, and sometimes the husband can pass with a car. And just wait later, later, later. later. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Your father advised you that that's what he did to your mother to respect him. But that's not the word of God. We've been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Is God speaking to us? Don't expect to change if you are not taught. It is the entrance of the word that gives light. Otherwise, your default mindset, even if you hated it, is what you will see playing out. I watch the way brothers treat ladies. And I know they are on their way to being bad gentlemen. Now, I know that ladies have their issues here and there. But let me tell you, it is still not enough reason. Please, marriage is not by force. It's not the condition for heaven. If you must marry, be willing to play a role. It is true that the woman should respect you regardless of results. But results is like a lubricant to honor and submission. It is difficult for a woman to struggle to submit to a man who has proven himself to be worthy of honor. He said, let them that rule well be counted for double honor. Is God speaking to us? I'm going to stop here in that area. We are still going to talk on expectations very quickly. But listen, if you are in a relationship, or you are looking at a lady prayerfully, or you are looking at a guy prayerfully, it doesn't matter what category, or you are married, go back home tonight. And ask yourself, if you want to get into business partnerships, what is your role? Do you understand? I'm coming into this business as what? Please, if you are a CEO here or you have a business, you are leading a business, go back and find out all the people involved in that business. What is their role? Let there be clarity. If there is one boy running around your house, one girl running around your house, let them know, are they protégés? Or are they sons and daughters, maybe spiritually, or by reason of commitment? Don't leave vagueness in your house. Who enters your room and who doesn't? Who should enter your bedroom and who shouldn't? Who should open your wardrobe and who shouldn't? If you don't define it, one day something will happen that will surprise you. You see homes. There are times a man and his wife can sit down, they are discussing very private issues. And the next thing, their mother or mother-in-law, somebody just bangs the door. And then, ah, oh, you four are discussing, but sorry, uh, there's no, no. It's the fault of the man. Create a system of order. Anybody that comes under my roof should know their boundaries and their limitations. Are we together? Yes. Nobody should come to your house with your wife there and just enter your kitchen and start cooking. No, sir. If your wife authorizes her or on grounds of friendship, that's fine. People cannot veto into your life like that. A man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls. Put walls. There are walls in heaven. There's no enemy there. Yet there are gates to regulate and bring order. Twelve gates. Hallelujah. I live a peaceful life as a man of God because there is clarity. I don't have to come here in the daytime to check. Have they put the chairs? No. The people have been trained to keep their roles. Here and there, people forget their roles or don't meet up to expectations. Then you can lovingly call people to order. You don't blame everybody for one person's mistake. When there is clarity of roles, if there is no food in the house, you know who to blame. Transfer of aggression is proof of lack of wisdom. There has to be somebody. If it is systemic, you can pinpoint who should do this. You don't blame your wife for something children should do. Children are running around here and you finish eating and your wife does not carry the plate. And you have a young lady, 13 years. She catwalks and pass you there. You call her back and say, no, pick that plate. You are going to become someone's wife. Daddy, I don't like this. This is the kind of thing. I, that's how I wash in that hotel. I keep quiet. Keep quiet. Fast. This is my house. I love you. I've been responsible. I don't mean to abuse you. 
but it is not under my watch. If I train you and you get to the age of discretion and you mismanage your life, I can stand before God and men and say, that is my daughter. I train her. Her life is not a reflection of my convictions. You remain my daughter, but you, you reap the consequence of your actions. But not when you are under your watch. Don't let anything under your watch in business and in life go out without definition. Expectations. Number three. Let's talk about this and we pray. Is God helping us tonight? Acts chapter 3 and verse 3 to 5. Quickly. Every relationship has expectations. Marriage, business, career, church, mentor, mentee, father, son, daughter, husband, wife, whatever kind. Every relationship has expectations. Acts chapter 3, please. The Bible is speaking about the man at gate beautiful he kept seeing peter and john the bible says that he saw them every time and then one time when he saw them they looked like they were rich they created an impression that cultivated expectation and then the bible says who seeing peter and john were they the only two that went to the temple no there was something he had been observing in them. That was his place of stay. And the Bible says he asked them for arms. Verse 4. And Peter, fastening his eyes, implicated himself by saying, look on us. If he kept quiet, that man would say, talk, you are passing. The rest, he kept begging and the rest just did like this. But Peter stopped. Are we together now? Yes. Many people don't want children, but you stop. You said, I want. You are implicating yourself. Many people don't want marriage. You stop. You looked at a lady and said, I want to spend my life with you. Every time you make a proposal and a commitment, you are creating expectation. It says, look on us. Verse 5, the last verse now. It says, and he gave heed to them, expecting to do what? Please talk to me. Expecting to... Your wife expecting something from you. Your husband expecting from you. God expecting from you. You expecting from God. Everything relational has expectations. Frustration in relationships are products of disappointed expectations. Now, many people are not vocal enough about their expectations. For most couples, it is hidden. They are not vocal to state it out, which in my opinion is very dangerous. There must be clarity of not only motifs, roles, but expectations. Expectations of behavior. Hello, look up please. Expectations of contribution. If you get a job with a bank, they tell you what to expect and then they tell you what they are expecting from you. Is that true? Yes. You can see the way the worship team is dressed. Wonderful, lovely people. By subscribing to this department, there are expectations. You have expectations, but then there are also expectations. There are demands. And it must be clear. Imagine if they didn't plan what to wear. There are times that I believe you can freestyle. Everybody just wears whatever. At that time, you don't blame anybody for wearing what. We can't all agree to wear suits. And then you just come in with your jeans and say, Look, there's liberty in the house of God. No. There's expectations. There are, there are times in the bank where they say, Today we are wearing the vest. If you are in that bank and you are walking, it's not whether you like it or not. It's the sacrifice for relationships. Please, I want you to note this. All relationships should have clearly defined expectations. Especially love relationships. Expectations of behavior and expectations of contribution. What do I expect you to bring to the table as my wife? What do I expect you to bring to the table as my husband? I just entered a relationship with you. Congratulations. What do I expect you to bring? What is the expectation of behavior from me to you? 
What is expectation of behavior from you to me? Listen, don't say it does not matter. There is expectation of behavior. When a woman gets married, her husband expects certain behaviors. The man too should... There, there is a way you must behave. There is a way you talk. There is a way you reason. When God makes you a leader and anoints you, there is expectation. Expectation. When trouble happens in, let's say, a company, you see maybe a, a staff and a customer are fighting. They are all fighting. When a manager or a director comes out, he doesn't act like the person who just got a job. Don't insult me or just because we live on the same street. I will remove this suit and beat the living daylight out of you. And while he's talking, a director comes out. His attention is called. He has been trained to create an expected behavior that reflects the values of the bank. And he comes out and says, okay, calm down. What's wrong? And he says, your staff, he, every time I talk to him, he counts money. And yes, you people are all cheats in this bank. He says, all right, we apologize. And he's paining the staff. The staff is saying, this guy. He says, no, it's all right. Just go up and wait for me. He doesn't even rebuke you. And then he tells the man, I'm sorry. For doing this, we are giving you 2,000 naira extra. And God said, tell that your foolish man that I'm a value staff. And walks out. You would think the director was cheap for doing that. It's called expected behavior. He now goes out and shuts the door. And then blasts the hell out of his staff. And then when he finishes, they come out as if they were drinking tea together. Because there is expected behavior. Does your home have an expected behavior? That's why men don't know who to beat in public or secret. No expectation. They just beat the wife, quarrel the wife. There are things your wife does not expect from you. There are things she expects from you. If you do not fulfill the expectations, the parties will be frustrated. Are we together? A woman cannot marry and still want her single life again. Something, you, you must have given up something. A man cannot marry and still want his single life again. You, are, you used to stay out late, 10 30 in the night for no reason. Now you are married and you say, please, that's how my life is. There is expectation of behavior. Hallelujah. You won't come and see me stand here. I'm not saying it's bad. You won't come and see me stand here flying chains and wearing all kinds of rings in my hand. They may not be wrong in themselves, but leadership demands expectation of behavior. Are we together? I can't come and stand here with clothes, not iron. As simple as that. If I were not in my position, it would not matter. But the position demands an expectation. Is God speaking to us? Every business, every career, and every love relationship must have a system of providing clarity of expectation. Now, let me say something very quickly. Look up, please. I wrote something down here. Never try, this is particularly for love relationships, never try to change a spouse's personality. There is a difference between personality and mindset. The only thing that can change is mindset. Personalities do not change easily. Most marriages and relationships are, are a circle of frustration because the man brings any lady and wants to force and mold that lady to reflect his idea. And there are certain things that are ideological in nature, but there are certain things that are personalities. You will be blessed. Listen carefully. A personality, write this down. The word personality means the psychological classification of different types of individuals. Please learn this. Personality talks of the psychological classification of different kinds of people. Personality talks about an individual's make up an individual's inherent identity an individual's make up an individual's inherent identity not mindset personality is not mindset an example of personality types now we're not doing all the standard the psychometry and all of this but i just want to give you an idea look up please because this is an area of great healing for many of us. Listen, 
We have people who are quiet and reserved. It's a personality. We have people who are logical and inquisitive. It's a personality. We have people who are vocal and idealistic. They are very outspoken. We have people who are adaptable and agreeable. They can marry anybody, it doesn't matter. If they marry pastors, they can be a pastor's wife. If they marry a farmer, they can be a farmer's wife. They can adjust and adopt. There are men like that. You make them CEOs, they will do well. You make them, you tell them to learn guitar, they can, they are adaptable and agreeable. There are people who, that, see, let me tell you this. Most relationship experts, most of them were fortunate to come into life with people whose personalities resonate. And then they take for granted the ease with which their marriage is working. And keep writing all kinds of books. And making it look like if you are not getting that ease, something is wrong. It's a lie. I don't have experience to speak over marriage. But I can tell you from the word of God and from people whose lives have been models that any marriage is hard work. Is that true? So a way with, there are people who are fortunate. They were able to resonate with individuals whose personalities are in tandem. So whether or not with minimal effort, there is compatibility. So they, they carry their relationship and their marriage as a template and write books about it and mentor people. Marriage is like the signs on the palm of someone's hand. You can only be guided, but you are the one who walks your marriage out with fear and trembling. Is God speaking to us? There are people who are people oriented and fun loving. You will mistake them for being less as fair, but they are not. Even when they say someone has died, they can say, eh, eh, and in two minutes they are laughing at something else. And you are saying, I, I expect you to be crying. Say, well, I used to have a friend like that. Very interesting friend. Even when he was sick, he said he had malaria and he was still laughing on a call. I said, this, this guy, will you ever frown? Now, you will see those people and be deceived that they are always joyful. No. Don't let their personality betray you. You will be with them for 10 years laughing every day and they will tell you, I've never been happy in this marriage from day one. You say, I can't believe this. You? Look at the portrait in the parlor. That's you laughing. He said, no, it's my personality. I have never really been happy. There are people who are strong-willed and authoritative. Men and women alike. Strong will, you have to give them a thousand reasons to bend to the slightest adjustment. Ah, may that be, not be your wife, oh, may that not be your wife. Strong will and authoritative. There are people who are argumentative and controversial. You ask them, What is one plus one? I say, It depends on the base. Base what? A simple answer that you can give. They, they like it. They like being controversial. Are we together? Yes. You ask a very simple question. They escalate little things. I saw the way you smiled at that guy. And you know, in psychology, there's something called eye contact. They, they create stories out of nothing. I'm sorry I did this to you. Why did you leave it till now? I mean, there, 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 no, no, there has to be a logic in this. I mean, you had a chance to say it in the morning, in the afternoon. You are saying it by night. It's a kind of argumentative. Now, they may not be bad. It's a personality. Most people are not guided. It's when they get married, they find out through experience that this is who and what I've married. Are we together? What is a mindset? A mindset is a viewpoint, a perspective, an established set of attitude. It's usually a product of orientation I wrote here that is created by information. The difference between a personality and a mindset is that a personality is inherent. It doesn't mean it cannot be adjusted. It can be adjusted by the power of the Holy Spirit. But it is inherent. A mindset is a philosophy you got as a result of an orientation that an information gave you. Now, let me tell you this. No matter how um, 
please come, come, two of you. Let's assume that doctor is very quiet. Are we together? Let's assume that he's a very quiet person. Let's assume that David Dam is very, very, um, very vocal. Now, two of them are filled with the Holy Spirit and all of that. But the truth of the matter is that the wife comes and says, Me, I like quiet men. Then you came to this guy. You are going to frustrate him by saying, Don't talk. The personality will keep betraying you again and again. Okay, keep quiet. And he keeps quiet. After five minutes, sorry, that, that thing I wanted to keep quiet now. And then at the end, he says, You are frustrating me. This is what happens in many marriages. The couples are on a mission to change, supposedly. You can't change any man. You can only change mindsets and trust the Holy Spirit. Create a system of understanding to manage personalities. Otherwise, don't go there. Fortunate for you if you can discern before. But if you didn't, then you must create a system of accommodation. There are women who are mouthy. It's not, it's not, um, it can be used wrongly. But it doesn't mean they are bad. They are just very vocal. They say a woman talks 4,000 words in a day while a man talks 1,005. So if a noisy woman talks 500 in a day, that balance is coming one day. Prepare for it. Because it should be 4,000. It's like a check that will soon cash. Are we together? You already know that your wife, for instance, is not somebody who is very quiet. And you have a business meeting. Find a diplomatic way of making her excuse the meeting. Because her personality is going to disrupt the meeting. And you will hate your wife. The Bible says, dwell with them according to knowledge. Same thing in relationships. There are men who like fighting for rights. A bike man throws you. And then the person you are going out to just comes. And say, are you joking? I have my friend who is a lawyer. Let's carry this. I say, no, no, no. Let it be. He said, no way. Me? Abba. I can't. I can't. Except I'm not the one in this relationship. You think it's a joke. Three days later, you see one lawyer guy with a paper looking for a bike man. Say, you threw my woman. You are somebody who is generally agreeable. I don't like trouble. So, don't tell the man the story of the bike man. Are you seeing that now? Since you forgive, let it be. There are all these advocates, fighters of justice, Nelson Mandela kind of personality. If, listen, listen, learn this, we are going to pray. Are we together? When you discern the personality, then you create a system around it. You can change mindsets, not personalities. Don't go there. If the personality by default does not resonate with what you can take. Unfortunately, most people are not mentored to this degree. So they make a lot of costly mistakes. You're a quiet person. And then a woman is noisy and you see her and say, Is it that you, you are not hearing what Apostle is saying? And she says, I'm sorry, sir. And while you are trying to talk, she says, Sorry, let me, this is, this is what I'm saying. My brother, it is not a cause from anybody's father's house. This is personality. Learn. Learn. Don't get angry at And then let me tell you what the devil will do. The devil will position a house help or someone that is quiet just like you want. And he said, Can't look at look at this. I've been talking to this lady for ten minutes. She's been silent. This is exactly what I'm talking about. And you make the wife hate the house help and say, You are leaving next month in this house. Whereas that's the only source of helping her education. The man did not understand. And the man has dishonored his wife before the house help. You are comparing, I'm not saying the house help is bad, but you are the wife. But you are now comparing the wife with the house help. The small girl will go back and say, wow. So this is how this man esteems me. I can't believe it. The next time she's passing, she will make up. You will be shocked. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She will make up. Not just because of going out like that. She said, ah, I used to think this is just, I mean, I can't believe that this man has this level of discernment over me. And trouble comes to you. Don't try to change anybody. No man can change anybody's personality. The more the word of God begins to act on you and cultivate the fruit of the spirit, you see that the fruit of the spirit will begin to adjust your personality. But it will not take everything away. A talkative will be a talkative. A quiet person will be a quiet person. 
There are many quiet people we think it's the Holy Ghost that made them so. No, it's their personality. So they make you feel guilty for talking so much. They make you look like if you are really a spiritual person, you should be quiet. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a big lie. There are others who are vocal and mouthy and jumping around. Maybe preach yourself. They can jump around and make it look like if you are not agile like that, you mm-mm, mm-mm. That's not the Holy Spirit. Let's separate between the one our personality brought in and the one that came. Just because you are anointed, Elijah was a temperous person. Short-tempered. He would have easily walked on it. But he didn't choose to walk on it. God still used him. So while you are mentoring, you are looking at his life for mentorship, make sure you take away the personality. So that you don't take the personality as part of what the Holy Spirit produces in men. There are people who are not honest. I can be angry with David Dam now and insult him. And say it's the zeal of the Lord. No sir, it's not the zeal of the Lord. I have a personality problem. I must be unashamed to make this know that this is not this is not the Holy Spirit. It is true that the Holy Spirit convicted me, but this uh -uh, that insult part was not the Holy Spirit. Are we together? You can change mindsets, but you almost may not be able to change personalities. No. Don't try to change your spouse's personality to reflect yours. Create a system of understanding. Create a system of understanding. I've taught again, and many of us know from psychology that women respond to life emotionally and men respond to life logically. We know that. You cannot make a woman become another man because of this. Let me tell you, uh, you've heard me share it. I can miss David Dam for one year. And the day we see, this is what happens. David, hi. And we're like, ah, I missed you. I so missed you. And it's over. That's it. All right, uh, we'll see. This is one year missing. That's a man for you. I just hugged him and remember that there's something I need to go and do quickly. A lady will leave her friend in the morning. And just because the friend didn't call by two, by four, she said, ha, ba. I notice you are getting heartless these days. Just because of six hours gap. Not to talk of a man that now traveled for three days and came back. And you see her being childish and playing all around you. And you say, what, what did I marry? I'm a, I'm a serious man. Everybody knows I'm visionary. What is this jumping up and down for? That's a lady for you. I tell you, the ladies are so blessed that I understand this and I'm letting you know. Yes, they are. Are we together? Now listen, the lady can come and meet the brother. We're rounding up. Sir, the landlord came home. And then the man keeps quiet. You didn't hear what I said? <laughs> then the man keeps quiet. Because you see, when men are under pressure, silence is the way they speak. Silence does not mean they are ignoring you. Silence means they are processing. If you don't understand this about men, you will destroy yourself. I say, what is all this thing with this man? What is all these things? You know, blah, 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 blah. When women are under pressure, they can talk. You've heard me say it again and again. The woman will talk about the issue of oil on a chair. That it is not oil anything. She has been finding a way of engaging her husband. And the guy has been, she's angry about plenty things. And it so happened that he now poured palm oil on a chair. I'm the one who walks in this house. I walk every day. Blah, 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 blah. And the man says, all for oil, have a sir. You are smart enough to know that this is not oil. The message is very clear. I am emotionally bankrupt. Find a way of fulfilling it. Fulfill that emotion and see how oil matter fades like a leaf. See how about the oil today? Which oil? Have a... Which oil? Are we together? So we have a visionary man and a wonderful, jovial, playful woman in the same house. And they just can't connect. The man is sitting. Bible study or business meeting. There's a contract coming. 100 million. Honey, do you know what is happening? 100 million is coming. I said, see, I I'm telling you, if you see the cold drink I'm making for you, and I say, I'm talking to you about something we will eat. And you are... <clears throat> and do you know what the woman says? She looks at him. And says, I've been married to you for 10 years. You have never appreciated me. I said, me? I've never appreciated you. What of the bad days? What of Dubai? 
what she's trying to say is, this is what I feel at this moment. And so I just have a way of saying it. And uh, I thought if I say from the beginning, it will bring the kind of impact that will force a response. Period. But the man will take it literally with his philosophical first class brain. And now go and say, my wife. Call his friend. I said, my friend. He said, you too. That's exactly what is happening my own home. going to pray there are times ladies talk to you the goal is not to answer they are not talking to you they are relieving themselves be wise and listen doesn't matter what they say they will ramble from pillar to post just just be agreeable if you want peace to reign be agreeable at the end of it when they start crying you can come in because you know that that's it. They've got it to the breaking point. Okay, call me. But you stop her in the middle of that conversation. My brother, you will hear it. Prophetess, preacher, you will. Because that's, it's like a radar looking for who to end. Just stand behind quietly. It's not weakness. It's wisdom. Through wisdom is a house built. 24 verse 3 of of Proverbs through wisdom amplified says a home a house whatever it is spirit. and then let me round up you talk to the man about the rent and he keeps quiet and he said I've noticed every time I talk to my husband he just ignores me what is this I'm talking to him because I'm under pressure you spoke to him on Sunday on Wednesday you just see him sit down and say, um, the house issue you spoke about. I'm not interested in anything. You didn't speak that time. No. That's how men talk. While he's sitting down, he has planned three or four people that he can call. He has made some calls without you knowing. You want to hear him making the call. The pride of a man does not allow that. He wants to show you he's responsible. Say, call in my presence. Let me know you are doing something. No. A man doesn't act like that. He will sit down. Because you are there, he will use an email inside. He will not use a call. So you will think he's not doing anything. Hey, Jimmy, please help me. Can I get 10 naira from you? Hey, Jimmy replies, yes. Thank you. The alert has entered the account. You didn't even know. Just because he's sitting down quietly. Husband, I'm, I'm telling you. I've been keeping quiet. I'm not like, just because I'm not like other women. And the man just keeps quiet. And one day, you go to test his blood pressure. And you see that it's everything over everything caused by you. And you come back and one day the man just looks at you. And in one word, he says, I'm going to divorce you. I can't take it. And so what have I done? And the man will say, I've been in this pain for 16 years. You don't understand me. But this is how he will say it. You don't respect me. You don't understand how we think. This is how men are. When they met Jesus, we caught a woman in adultery. Jesus just kept quiet. That's a man for you. Are you not going to talk? When he was before Pontius Pilate, in pain. When men are in pain, they keep quiet. When women are in pain, they talk till they cry. Men are not like that. Even when they cry, it's just a tear that speaks. My wife, I am in pain. Being a man is not one day. And the woman is talking. And then she said, oh, since you will not do anything, I will go and call this. To, and he said, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, you talk now. Just go. Go and sleep. Then in the middle of the night, the man wakes up and goes to sit down outside. Did I offend you? No, you didn't offend him. He's processing. Learn how men think. He will sit down under a tree and say, Lord Jesus, you gave me a wife and children. Shame has come upon me like a shadow. Will you not help me? I must come and sit with you. The Bible says, what God has joy. Leave the man. He's talking to God. He's talking to God. What is all what God has joined again? He's talking to God. All right, my uniques. You watched the video. You heard what the apostle said. Marriage is a beautiful union. 
But for us, even for the men and for the women, we have to understand how each other think, their thought process, what goes on in their action and everything. Like I said earlier, marriage is joined by God. God created marriage before he created other things. Before any other thing was created, God created marriage. That's the first union before the state, before the local government, before countries, marriage. So marriage is the foundation of all things. Remember to give us a thumbs up, share this video, and please subscribe to the channel. We need to pray for each other and pray for our marriages. When we have a strong marriage, we have a strong community, we have a strong society, and we have a strong world. I love, love, love you guys. Bye-bye.